All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a fight review. We're going to Saitama Super Arena in Japan for Ryzen 37. We're going to the Super Atomweight Division. Kana Asakura coming in at 19 and 6, taking on Shiyu Park coming in at 7 and 4. Now, this was a bout for the first round, the quarterfinals of the 2022 Ryzen Super Atomweight Grand Prix. For me, this is probably my most anticipated bout having followed these two fighters for years and uh, knowing that they've trained together in the past I wanted to see how they would do against each other okay so let's get into it so first round uh, there was some feeling out Park mixed strikes to the head and body uh, Kana missed some kicks Park landed a, a strong right counter that put Kana on her back foot and then uh, Park started coming forward Kana went for a takedown that was blocked by Park, and then there was a break for an accidental eye poke. Um, Kana got poked in the eye. Then after the action resumed, uh, Kana went for a double leg that Park was able to sprawl on, and then almost immediately after Park let her up, Kana went for another immediate takedown that was just completely denied entirely. Like She went, shot for it, and Park just blocked and moved away. Um, then uh, Park landed in the front kick, and something I noticed, and this it only got worse as the fight went on. Kana was having trouble landing like anything. Uh, Park was really mixing up her punches to the head and body, and throwing in some kicks as well. Uh, Kana went for another takedown that was denied, and then there was a nice uh, bit of exchange in the closing seconds. So, pretty strong first round for Park. Uh, second round, Park. Came out more aggressive to start. Uh, she was coming forward more and again, mixing up her strikes nice, attacking the body and the head. Uh, she blocked a takedown and uh, drove Kana to the ropes. And there's some nice, uh, some good clinch work there by Park. You know, again, she's mixing up her punches and she looked for some trips of her own, which started to surprise me. And then uh, the ref decided he'd seen enough of them in the corner and he separated. Uh, Kana went for a double leg. Uh, Park was able to sprawl, started punching the head, and then uh, there's an elbow at the separation. And then immediate Kana takedown is denied again. And this time Park trapped her in the corner, started landing knees, and then got a big elbow. And then this really surprised me. Park got an outside trip straight to side control. I was very shocked that Park got her own takedown in this fight. Um, now, Kana was able to get back to her base on all fours, and uh, Park put on a front headlock to, to stand them back up, landed some knees to the head, and this was, they were in the corner, and Park had was to the side of, of Asakura at this point, and was basically kneeing her, like throwing occasional knees for basically the last 30 seconds of the round. Now, they weren't anything like super hard, but it was pretty consistent that she was landing those knees to Asakura's head. So third round, this is looking like Park's fight to win and Kana was really gonna need a finish here. Um, third round starts, Park lands a front kick and uh, she slipped. Now Kana went for a takedown as soon as, as Park was able to get up, but Park was able to stuff it and forced Kana to the corner. Park started dirty boxing there in the corner uh, had nice wrist control, was throwing some knees. And then Park, again, gets an outside trip takedown, uh, pass guard, and this was the biggest shocker of the fight to me. Park, as she passed guard, latched on an arm bar. She was stretching it out. It looked tight, but Kana was able to stack Park and escape out of it. As soon as Kana got out, Park landed a nice up kick, created, creating the distance, and uh, both were stood up. Kana went for another takedown shot that got stuffed and Park let her up in the corner and started unloading some punches. Uh, again, mixing to the head and the body. Uh, Kana, she was stunned. You could tell she was like stunned, she was hurt. She went for a desperation takedown, but Park uh, sprawled, landed some punches to the head from the top and then three straight knees to Kana's head. And then uh, Park started unleashing, absolutely unleashing some punches in the corner again but was, but was smart with it. Like she picked her punches and made sure that they were going to land. Um, uh, 
where I see this. Oh, so Kana, she was hurt again, and then another went for another absolute desperation takedown that got stuffed. Uh, Kana was looking exhausted, and Park, it looked like she was just going to play with her. Uh, final 30 seconds, Park, <coughs> excuse me, was landing at will, and it seemed like Kana was just surviving. Uh, another takedown got blocked, more knees from Park, and then right as the bell sounds, Park lands a right high kick that dropped Kana as the referee stepped in, and uh, she wasn't, Kana wasn't out, but you could tell she was exhausted and done. Uh, we'll talk about that kick at the bell at the end there, but it goes to the judges, and all three judges saw it unanimously, uh, she who Park. This, and this is an absolute shutout by Shiyu Park. I mean, just absolute shutout of the former Grand Prix champion. Uh, Park used really good footwork, good head movement. She was mixing up her strikes. Her takedown defense was absolutely on point. This was the best Shiyu Park that I've seen, and I've watched every single one of her now 12 fights. And this is the absolute best she has ever looked against a serious opponent. I mean, Kana, she just could not get out of first gear. Absolutely, like, stuck in first gear. Could not get going. Could not get any momentum working for her. Uh, absolutely outmatched. And I gotta be honest, I think a part of this is that Kana has kind of seemingly stopped evolving as a fighter. Like, she started out good and a fairly complete fighter from the beginning, mostly a strong wrestler and grappler. And then her, her striking improved, but now it seems like she's kind of like stopped evolving, whereas Park has continued to evolve. And speaking of that, you know, Park... If you were to tell me two years ago, um, pre-COVID, that Park would end up beating Kana Asakura, I like Park, but I'd have had my doubts. I'd have seriously doubted you. But the two years that she spent in Japan uh, working at Crazy B with a top wrestler like Miyu Yamamoto, it has absolutely elevated Park's MMA game. Uh, her takedown defense is so on point now that it has helped her become better as a striker. Because when you're a striker and you're constantly worried about takedowns, you're not able to get off your best strikes. But as your takedown defense gets better and you can stop the takedowns, that just gives you that much more confidence in your striking. And we saw it in this very fight. Like the more... Park was able to stop Kana's takedowns, the more confident she grew in her striking and the more she was able to let go with her hands and her kicks. So this, the last two years have been like, a, almost like a godsend for Shiyu Park. So question about Asa, Kana Asakura. How much longer does she have in the sport? Uh, she's 24 years old and she's talked in the past about wanting to retire by age 25. Well, that's coming up very fast. Uh, it seems like the end is near for her. And, and that'd be a, a shame because she is a talented fighter and I think she could continue to grow. But that's up to her. And she seems like, you know, very traditional Japanese girl wants to, you know, do her own thing for a few years and then eventually settle down, get married and have kids. And she seems pretty determined to do that. But uh, back to Shiyu Park. She is a serious threat to everyone in the atom weight division now. I mean, she already was, but after seeing seeing how she did in this fight, there was I don't think there's any atom weights that aren't going to be in serious trouble against her. She is a undeniable threat to everyone left in this super atom weight Grand Prix. Now, a quick little note here. Watching the replay the second and third time, it seems like the bell sounded, Park let go of the kick at the end, 
and then a bell sounded again, and that's when the referee intervened. I don't know, maybe the audio was off. Maybe she didn't hear the initial bell. Maybe she was already letting the momentum go. I don't know. I think it's a little bit unfortunate because I know there are already people calling her a dirty fighter, but I I don't think it was intentionally uh, illegal. Plus, the referee hadn't stopped, stepped in yet. So that was just a small note on that. Anyway, let's talk things to work on. Uh, starting with Chiu Park. I think she could have finished Khan Asakura in the third. I seriously think she could have had she poured it on just a little bit more, given the referee a reason to stop it. Now, I can't get too mad because she was making sure that everything she threw was landing and was doing her best to make sure that what she threw landed. But I think had she just spazzed out a little bit, you know, just really started go, like hurricaning the strikes, maybe she could have gotten the referee to stop it. Maybe it's because, you know, her and Connor are, are pretty cool with each other. They're, they're almost like friends. They've trained together in the past. Maybe she didn't want to, like, seriously hurt Asakura too much. I hope not. I'd like to see her get a finish. Uh, for Connor Asakura, oh my gosh, her takedowns. She There is zero setup to her takedowns. you got to set up your takedowns. you got to at least throw a couple, a couple of punches. Even if the punches are going to miss, they're going to get your opponent... Uh, look at focusing on nose and then you shoot but her takedowns there was no setup and also there was no variety it was either double leg or single leg she didn't go for any trips and the clinch she barely went for the clinch at all herself just no variety and no setup she's got to she's got to you know vary up her takedowns and she's got to set them up properly all right finally fights to make Sticking with Kana Asakura, um, I think Laura Fontora would be a good one. You know, they're both coming off a, a loss in the first round of the Grand Prix. Or if they want to give Asakura possibly a bit easier fight against someone who's also fought for Ryzen as well, Moeri Suda. Now, Suda has a fight in Deep Jewels in September, but she could be ready again by November, December. And that would be, you know, a good, like, tune-up fight for Asakura. Because Suda's getting better as well. And they're both grapplers. That'd be make for a fun fight to see who's the better grappler. And for Shiyu Park, well, she moves on to the second round of the Super Atomweight Grand Prix. She could face um, Seika Izawa for the second time. She could face Reina for the second time, or she could face Ayaka Hamasaki for the first time. I think it's they're going to lean towards Ayaka Hamasaki, but any one of those three fighters would make for a great fight, and she's a serious threat to all of them. So either way they go, I'll be happy with it. I'll definitely watch. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this. Ryzen 37, Shiyu Park absolutely shuts out Kana Asakura in a unanimous decision. Let me know your thoughts on the fight in the comments down below. If you like the video, please give it a like, share it as well. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to WMMAC Now, the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.